Hello everyone. In this video, I am going to derive the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram of a cantilever beam that is subjected to point load and also the cantilever beam that is subjected to uniformly distributed load. First, let me draw a cantilever beam. So here we go. You know what is a cantilever beam? A beam that is fixed on one side. Say for example, it is built into the wall on one side and it is free on the other side. That's a cantilever beam. And let me define the geometric properties of this cantilever beam. This cantilever beam, let us say that it has got a length of magnitude L. And when it comes to beam, you don't define its cross-sectional area as a geometric property. Though it is a geometric property, you actually define something called as moment of inertia. Its unit is meter raised to the power 4 or mm raised to the power 4. Moment of inertia is resistance to bending. So that is the meaning of moment of inertia. And let me define the material property. So when it comes to beam, the material property that you actually define is Young's modulus. Its unit can be Newton per meter square or Newton per mm square. Okay. So I have clearly defined the geometric properties and the material property of this cantilever beam. Now, what is the stuff that is acting on this cantilever beam? Let us say that this beam is subjected to a point load at the free end to begin with. And what is the magnitude of the load? Let us say that the magnitude of the load, it's a solid chunk of load that is acting. And it is assumed to act at a particular point. In our case, the load is acting at the free end of the beam. It is not spread over a certain area. It is acting at the free end of the beam. And look at the way the load acts. It is acting in the transverse direction to the beam. It is acting perpendicular to the length of the beam. If the load acts along the length of the beam, you have to call it as a bar. One of the definitions of four beams, the load should act perpendicular to the length of the beam. And again, I have to tell you that the length of the beam should be highly pronounced compared to the other two dimensions. For example, compared to the height, compared to the depth of the beam. In our case, the length of the beam is highly pronounced. And you can clearly see that I have not at all exaggerated the height of the beam. And I have not at all exaggerated the depth of the beam. However, I have exaggerated the length of the beam. So that by definition is a beam. Now I'm going to draw the shear force diagram. So here we go. So I will be drawing the shear force diagram and I will also be drawing the bending moment diagram. So I can draw the diagram here. And let me first draw the datum line. So maybe the datum line can be represented by this white color here. So this is the datum line for the shear force diagram and I am going to represent the datum line for the bending moment diagram. Here we go. Yeah. So this is where I will be drawing the shear force diagram S F D and this is where I will be drawing the bending moment diagram B M D. The first step to draw the shear force diagram and the bending moment diagram is to discern a section. Now, how do I discern a section? Look what I do. I discern a section here. Okay, you can see the dashed line. I call this section XX. Between the points, let us say A and B. And I'm discerning a section XX. What I'm actually going to do, I'm going to find out the shear force at the section XX by considering all the forces acting on the right hand side. Okay, that is what I'm going to do. So I, let me write that. 
I'm going to find the shear force. SF stands for the shear force at the section XX. That's right. Now, what did I say? I said I'm going to find the shear force at the section XX by considering all the forces acting on the right hand side or HS that stands for right hand side. And what are the various forces that are acting on the right hand side? I see only one blue arrow acting in the downward direction. You see that here? Right. Quite obvious. So there is only one blue arrow acting in the downward direction because it is acting in the downward direction. I put a negative sign and I write what is the force? This capital F. And there is a rule that I am going to follow and that rule is if you are if you are getting negative sign maybe I can change the color maybe I can write this in red if you are getting negative sign and if you have considered all the forces on the right hand side you have to plot the diagram above the data line so this up mad, upward arrow indicates that you have to plot it above the data line now just imagine it's going to be a little exercise for your imagination than the intellect just imagine that this section xx is shifted towards the left say for example the section xx is shifted a little bit towards the left and if you consider all the forces acting on the right hand side still you will end up with the same value minus w just imagine that you are shifting the section xx a little bit sharply towards the right over here still you are going to end up with the same value minus w so the section xx if you shift it anywhere between the point a and b let me say that one more time the section xx if you are shifting anywhere between the point a and b you are going to end up with exactly the same value for shear force and you can see that the value for the shear force is just constant and it is minus w so i am going to write a statement you get the value equation the value the value equation or value if you if i say equation it's just a constant so i, I will just write equation which in our case it's a constant value w so this equation with a bracket let me write constant is actually is actually valid perfectly valid between the point a and the point b if that is the case if we are considering a section here you are going to get w if you are going to consider a section here you are going to get w if you are considering a section here you are going to get w which means no matter what is the value between a and b the value of the shear force is just going to be w so here we go it is just w so if I have to write that down it is W here it is W here it is W here all the way it's just W so this is the shear force diagram this is the shear force diagram let me shade that this represents the magnitude of the shear force that is generated across the cross-sectional area throughout the length of the beam the magnitude of the shear force is just going to be the same let me derive the bending moment let me let me draw the bending moment diagram for that i have to derive the bending moment equation okay the bending moment equation i'm going to find out the bending moment by considering at a section xx again so bm stands for bending moment I'm going to find the value of the bending moment at the section xx. You see the section xx there? Yeah. 
by considering all the forces acting on the right hand side. If I consider all the forces acting on the right hand side, okay, and I'm going to find out the bending moment at the section xx. You know what is the formula for bending moment? Bending moment is force into perpendicular distance between the line of action of the force and the point about which the bending moment is being taken. So it is the perpendicular distance between the line of action of the force. You see, this is the line of action of the force. You can see that I'm putting an yellow line. This is the line of action of the force. And it is the distance between the line of action of the force. This is the distance at the point about which the bending moment is taken. This is the distance. Maybe I can call the distance x, right? I can call this distance x. If you are reckoning from the left hand side, you can call it uh, L minus x. Suppose if you are saying, say for example, this distance is x, then this will be L minus x, L minus x, okay? We will take that way because some people reckon it at it, at it reckon it from the left hand side the distance okay perfectly fine so the distance from the point b the force to the point about which the moment is taken it is l minus x so bending moment is force into perpendicular distance now what is the type of moment that is very important is it clockwise or it is anti-clockwise if you look here let me put that in put that in red color the force causes a clockwise moment about the section xx. It is clockwise, CW, or clockwise. If it is clockwise, which is positive, right? So I'm putting a plus sign here, plus, because it is positive. And the moment is force, which is W, and perpendicular distance, which is L minus x, into L minus that is the bending moment equation okay it is w into l minus x w into l minus x it's a product okay now i again i have to write the statement that this equation is actually valid between the point a and b no matter where you shift this section x x you shift it towards the left still the distance is on the right hand side is going to be l minus x onto the left hand side from the point a it's going to be x so no matter where you shift the section you are exactly going to end up with the exact equation so allow me to write the statement that this equation is perfectly valid between the point a and b so the equation this is important the statement is important this equation is valid between the point A and B. The equation is valid between the point A and B. And I have to write the type of equation. This is, this equation is a straight line equation because you see here, right, it is a, it, it is a straight line, x so the the way in which the bending moment is going to vary it's just going to vary in a straight line manner if it is a square we can say the bending moment it's a quadratic equation or sometimes parabolic if it is a cube then you can say the bending moment varies in a cubic fashion or if it is raised to the power four you can say it's a quartic equation now in our case the bending moment is going to vary in a straight line fashion so i'm going to say the equation, the next point, I'm going to say bending moment Bm will be a straight line. The bending moment diagram will be a straight line. The bending moment diagram will be a straight line. So that's what I'm writing. It's a straight line. Now all I have to do is find out the bending moment at the left extreme end and find out the bending moment at the right extreme end. Shall we do? Right? And before I even do that, yeah, let us do, let us do. Bending moment at the left extreme end. Bending moment at the left extreme end, what is that point? It is at the point A. Okay? You look for the highlighter, so I'm putting a highlighter. This is where we are going to find the bending moment. Bending moment at the point A. 
that is easy. So bending moment at the point A is force into perpendicular distance, but at the point A, the value of x is 0. If the value of x is 0, right, if you put x is equal to 0 here, right, what happens to this equation? It just becomes plus w into L. And the value is positive rule. This is by convention. And you have considered the forces on the right hand side. In order to find out this equation, you consider all the forces on the right hand side to the section xx. If it is positive and if you are considering the forces on the right hand side, you have to plot it below the datum line. Okay? This is by rule. If it is positive and if you are considering the forces on the left hand side, you can plot it above. Okay? Fine. You plot it below the datum line. So here we go. And the way I plot it is here is the value and the value is WL. You know the equation, the, the unit for bending moment is Newton meter. That you may want to write. So that is Newton meter. And let me find the bending moment at the right extreme end. Bending moment at the point B. Bending moment at the point B can be computed by considering I'm sorry, by substituting the value of x as L because if you shift this section xx towards the point B, the value of x becomes equal to the length of the beam. So by substituting x is equal to L in this equation, so here if you just substitute x is equal to L, L minus L becomes 0, the value of bending moment becomes 0. Okay, So at the point B, the value of bending moment is 0. Now, how do you join these two points by a straight line? And this is going to be our bending moment diagram. This is how the bending moment varies across the cross section. I'm sorry, across the length of the beam. So, along the length of the beam, this is how the bending moment varies. It varies in a straight line. So, this is how you draw the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram for a cantilever beam that is subjected to a point load. Okay, it's perfectly uh, a valid technique by discerning a section. You can consider the forces on the right hand side or on the left hand side. Suppose uh, the, in the case of cantilever beam, it's a bit tricky if you are considering the forces on the left hand side. So let me write that here. There will be a reaction. Uh, which is going to be the same as the action. So the reaction force will also be W and there will be a concentrated reaction moment. So there will be a concentrated moment that acts in this direction. And you don't know the magnitude of the concentrated moment. The magnitude of the concentrated moment will be uh, W into L in our case. But you just to avoid confusion, my recommendation is at least for the cantilever beam, please consider all the forces on the right hand side. For a simply supported beam, you can perfectly consider the forces on the left hand side, on the right hand side. It's going to be, give you the same results, okay, whether you consider the forces on the left hand side or right hand side. For a cantilever beam also it gives you the same result, but just to avoid confusion, my suggestion is if you are preparing for the examination, you better consider all the forces on the right hand side. Thank you so much. In the next video, we are going to derive the shear force diagram, bending moment diagram for a cantilever beam subjected to uniformly distributed load. Thank you so much for your patience.